פרשת אמור. It says in the parasha, ויאמר השם אל משה, אמור אל הכהנים, בני אהרון ואמרת להם, לנפש לא יטמא בעמיו. Again, if you look at this פסוק, there's something that seems a little bit off grammatically. But it says, and Hashem said, God said to Moses, say to the priests, the sons of Aaron, and you tell them. Well, you already told them to tell them, so why you got to tell them? Yeah. Right? So by this double usage of the word Amarta ve'amar, or emor, Chazal were darshaning in Vaikra Rabbah, in Parsha Chavav, that there is a difference between the angels and humans. Ben ha'elyonim u ben ha'tachtonim. And I'm quoting, ha'elyonim she'en yetzer ha'ra matzui ba'em, the angels, since they don't have the evil inclination, amira achat daya la'em, tell them one time it's enough. You don't have to tell them again. She'neemar, because it says, it says in Daniel chapter 4, verse 3. 18, 14. 14. So it says they need one, they don't need too many times. Now you might understand, of course, why it was so uh, amazing when Bnei Israel and Mount Sinai said, Naaseh v'nishma, Yatashem, tell them, okay, whatever you say, we'll do. So that's why they were able to lift themselves into such a level. Of course, that's not the level that you're going to reach by calling and saying, Rabbi, what's the loophole here? That's not. However, the Tachtonim, it says, the people, human, sheyesh bayem yetzerara, halevai leshte amirot yamodu. I wish that for two, if I tell them twice, that will, that will be enough. In other words, you probably need to tell them 50 times. So therefore the Midrash is darshaning exactly what we said. That's what it said twice. Since the difference between the angels and human is yet serara, so we need to know now what we deal with it. How are we going to deal with this thing? Again, it says, Halevai, I wish the two times would have been enough. How many times does it have to tell us keep Shabbat? How many times Shabbat is mentioned in the Torah? And, and still, we have a problem with it. We look for loopholes, we look for holes, whatever it is. So based on this Midrash, the Shem Mishmuel, Ari, aren't you eating this wonderful chulet? The Shem Mishmuel brought the difference between angels and, and human, and he writes, he writes the following. In Ektiv, it says in Vaikra, Tetzayin Yutet, V'tiyaro v'kiddesho. Again, that seems to be a problem. Mazet tiyaro? Purify. And then he made them holy? Why, why, is, this, why is this double a what is it? V'tiyaro, and it's good. What does it mean v'kiddesho? And he made it holy? If something is pure, wouldn't it be holy? So he says, V'tiyaro mima she'avar. The tiaru, purify it, refers to something that already passed. Vikidesho, and it would sanctify it, Latid Lavo, something in the future. He says, in other words, Hainu ki en in yang dushai lokit, the divine holiness does not bestow upon itself unless it's something that is appropriate for it to be. That's why it's appropriate for you to sanctify your house, not to have in your house all kind of like schmutz, nonsense, television. Get the thing out of your house. No need TV. Garbage. Don't have inappropriate talk in your house. Don't do inappropriate things in your house. You do it, Kedusha goes away. Goes away. Don't associate yourself with people who are, you know, unholy. Stay away. So, 
ועל כן, זה שם משמואל says, and therefore, קודם הקדושה, before holiness comes, we need tahara, we need to purify it. And we need to remove all the things that are not appropriate, and only then the divine providence will dwell upon you. Only then. And it says, ועל כן טהרה היא לעולם ממה שעבר. That's why the Tara comes to purify on something or represent something that already passed. On something that was. And we need to purify ourselves from what happened. And that's why he says, קדושה שתשרה בו קדושה אלוקית שייך רק לעתיד לבוא. Only belongs to something that's going to be in the future. But first you're going to take the step to purify yourself. You have to take the step to purify yourself. And it says, ועל כן, and therefore, התחתונים שיצר הרע מצוי בהם, us, humans, that we have an evil inclination, we have a yetzer, we have desires, we have passions, and so on, we need to remove them before we're going to do anything. We need to remove it to create room for the kedusha that would stay upon us. That's why we need those two statements. Emor ve'amarta. And he says, see, and he says, he, he brings, in the name of his father, he says it is like removing, the removal of Yetzer Hara is like a fly or bug that sits on the two openings of your heart. It says that, a, that it does not allow the Kedusha to enter your heart. In other words, if you see that somewhere along the line you can't connect to something holy, you can't connect to, to Judaism, you cannot connect to Rabbanim, you cannot connect to the Torah, you cannot, to connect, cannot connect to anything that is holy, means that there is a certain element in you that it blocks the Kedusha from penetrating. You need to remove that. You need to remove that. And then it says, and therefore, v'achakach amira shniya lekadshenu. The amira shniya אמור ואמרת, סודר ואמרת, is להכניס הקדושה בלב ההערה הקדושה. You need to put the holy, you know, light into, your, into yourself, into your heart. However, since the מלאכים don't have יצר הרע, they don't need that. The מלאכים don't have any, any uh, blockage to uh, any other kind of thing, anything that would prevent them to reach holiness, that's why the reward of the malach does not exist. We have it to get a reward. And therefore, for them, is one, one statement is enough. But the tachtonim, us, cannot reach the kedusha until we are going to do something to remove the tum'ah from us. We need to do it. Of course, it is very hard to do so by yourself, but you need to really make an effort. You need to make an effort, right? You come to purify yourself, you're going to get a special, a special uh, support, a heavenly support to help you purify yourself. You're going to get a protection. They're going to create almost like a, you know, lehavdil in a, in a, in a whatchamacallit, a, uh, in football, right? So you have the quarterback, he gets the, he snaps the ball, and now he draws back a few steps, he's about to throw the ball right away. If you have a good offensive lineman, they're gonna create a pocket around you, and that pocket is to allow the quarterback to throw the ball appropriately. That CU, that protection, is the divine you know, offensive lineman around us. But in order to, get a, to make a team, believe it or not, you need to have a very strong defense. Many times defense wins the game. You need an offense, but a defense wins the game. You need to make sure, therefore, that you have the defensive mechanism for your spirituality in place. You have to. That's your immune system. You could be very athletically fit, but if your immune system is compromised, it's not good. You're going to get sick. So is to spirituality as well. You need to develop a spiritual immune system. You need to create an offensive lineman, a spiritual offensive lineman, to create a pocket in order for you to be able to deliver what you want to deliver all the way downfield.
the same thing applies here. And the difference is that, you know, we are the, uh, the we are the, you know, the quarterbacks are sitting on the sofa, while those people are, we are the spectators, the malachim are the spectators, while we are playing the game. They cannot play the game. They are holy. But they don't get the reward. We do. So, as we said, so therefore the reason why we have those two statements is only for humans, to mankind. One, to purify itself, and the other one is to remove all of Yetzirah. One is to remove the Yetzirah, and therefore the other one to purify in order for the Kedushah to penetrate inside. But it's very difficult to see how those things really play, and so on and so forth. And how do we do it? So we can take an example, since we were talking about the Kohanim, we can take an example from the Kohanim and try to apply it to our lives. It says in the Kohanim, They should not, when they when the mornings, don't rip your hair. In other words, don't, don't cut your beard. You see, Jewish people had beards. And don't scratch your body when you're mourning and so on and so forth. Why? They're going to be holy to God and they would not desecrate the name of God by doing all these things. Why? Because they sacrifice whatever they sacrifice to Hashem and they need to be holy. So what does it have to do with me? It has to do with the following. The Kohanim are called upon to become, to stay, to become holy. And the way to, to Kedusha, to become holy, is very different to what you think. The way for holiness is really turn your back to death. To turn away to, bad, to, to death, and it's not something that you can take for granted. And we could have thought of maybe of like an alternative system that we would, uh, we would think that, oh no, by connecting ourselves to death, right, that's what will bring you to, to bring Dusha, right, to become holy. But the answer is no. The statement of the Torah is as sharp as a razor. It will cut. It is so sharp. According to the Torah, holiness means life. Life. Not only that it's not so clear, it's also difficult. Because the death of the sons of Aharon is an example to how difficult things are. The human instinct, the fatherly instinct, the human instinct, in the case of Aharon, is really to come closer to death. To experience. Why? Because his two sons died. So what would be to rip your clothes, to pull your hair, to go to the funeral, to mourn, and so on and so forth. Here the Torah says, stay away from all these things. Stay away from all these things. And we do say, what do we say? Hashamayim, Hashamayim le Hashem, ve'aretz, natalem le'adam. Heavens, heaven for, the, for, for God. Earth, He gave to us. And then what did it say? Lo hametim ya The dead cannot praise God. Veloko Yoda Duma, and not those who are in the place called Duma. Ve'anachnu, and we, that we are alive, nevarech ya me'ata ve'ad olam. Right? We, that are alive, we can all, are the ones who can praise God. In other words, we can also the ones who sanctify God's name. The limits of men are the limits of the earth. Not the heavens. That, that, or to the other way, the, uh, the heavens, or the, you want to call it hell, you know, whatever it is. The place of the dead is outside of the realm of this world, of this, of this earth. It's outside of the realm. Sam, I'm waiting for you. And therefore, we need to remember that the dead are dead. There's nothing you can do. The dead are dead, and there's nothing to expect from them. There is no... It doesn't make sense to try to meet them or to pray for them 
for us to pray that they will pray for us or we could, should try to get some kind of information from the dead. Only a living person. Adam Chai. And Chai, right, comes to something that, uh, you know, we have, of course, we have to define what life is, but that's where you need to correct yourself, connect yourself. And it's not something, again, you should take for granted. Not like today, many practices of people, there is in recent years, I'm not talking about recent years, I'm talking about the last, you know, 40 years or so. There is a tremendous increase of people with the festival of the death, of dead. They go to they go to cemeteries, they go to graveyards, they make picnics there. I mean, this is so un-Jewish. This is so un-Jewish. It's one of probably the most un-Jewish thing you can do. Leave the dead alone. There's a whole festival that people do. They go to the cover of this one, to the gravestone of the other one. They write little notes. They throw the notes. They make a wish. Making a wish to a dead person and writing a note is like making a wish for the star. When you wish upon the star. If I'll pray to the stars to make my wish, it's just as much as I'm praying for the dead to make my wish. Just as much. Stay away from the death festival of going to grave sites and cemeteries. Stay away from that. Isaac, there's some Kohen. Chava, there's some Chulit. And it's not something that, that it's so, you know, how should I say it? Easy to say, but it has to be said because today, again, people go to the dead person to, to ask for, for, ask for Shidduch. You want to go for a Shidduch? Not a problem. Work on yourself. Make yourself worthy to get a shidduch. But so where did it come from, people to go to the Kiris to the Kim? To ask them I'm not going to answer this in this, in this realm, not in front of the camera. But it's really something that the, we adopted from the Goy. When I came to America, I was driving down the, the Jackie. At the time, it was the Interboro. Before it was the Jackie, it was the Interboro. Allah was alone with the Interboro. And I saw there something that was really bizarre for me because I've never experienced such a thing. I saw a, a, a ceremony of, of uh, Chinese people and I was like shocked. They brought food there. I mean, there was a whole entire thing, food. I said, what is this thing? They're eating in a graveyard? Yeah. I couldn't believe it. And lo and behold, we do the same thing. People go to a graveyard, to this graveyard, to that graveyard. You know, Baba this, Baba that, they're doing this, they're doing that, they, they have a whole picnic over there, Mangaluna Esh, Maze. What kind of thing is that? I, I mean, things that are so foreign to us. And that's how we make the Kedusha, the holiness, run away from us. And, and why is it, why am I so against it? Because I'll tell you, when you're going to enter the land, don't do the same abomination as, as the dead people, as the, as the nations who live there. What do they do? Don't do kind of like things with the fire, you know, like Zaratustrans that jump over the fire, they do kind of fire stuff. Kosem kesamim, a person who does magic, meonen, umenachesh, umechashef, all these people do all this trickery, magicians, fortune tellers, and I don't care if it's a Karen from Long Island, you know, she's a fortune teller or some kind of a thing, or some, some guy in guru in Timbuktu. <clears throat> you don't do those things. You don't go to, to, to know the future. You don't care about the future. You should have bitachon in Hashem. Why? What else? Chover chever, shoel ov, Ve'yedoni ve'doresh el amitim. Doresh el amitim is is a person who seeks the closest of the dead. You go to the dead and you make a drasha for them. Please, Mr. Dead Person, whoever it is, you know, I want you to please. I want need a shidduch. Why are you praying to the dead person? He's dead. He's dead. Pray to Hashem. Ah, he can daven better. He can the dead person or even a li a living person. He can pray better than you know. He's a better channel to Hashem than you. Hey. There was a whole group of people that made a religion out of that. You want to speak to God, you speak to Him directly. 
the re one of the reasons that you don't want to speak to God directly, because if he answers your questions, now you have to acknowledge the existence of God. And you don't want to do that, so go to somebody else. Ah, it's nothing. I just, the guy's a crook. I paid him $200. He gave me nothing. The problem that we go to all these people is a problem of Amuna. Our belief is, is impaired. So you don't go to fortune tellers. Yeah, I don't, that's why I don't believe in Ainara. I don't believe in those things. I don't believe that some grandma has some power to close my luck because she, you know, it's nonsense. She goes like this. They come with a lock, with a key. She closes and then your luck gets closed. I mean, you got to be, believe me, and I'm going to tell you very bluntly, an absolute primitive person to believe in that. Don't believe in that. I believe in one thing. I believe in God. That's it. All these things, they put uh, copper on the head, I mean, uh, melted, melted uh, uh, lead on the head, uh, you know, they can tell, you know, they take the kishuf out. I mean, this is like hocus pocus, whatever. I mean, bad man, really? They take water on the head, whoosh, make sound. I mean, it's very dramatic, it's very nice. But for us, this is, this is, it's not for us to do. To read the cards, tarot, you know, tarot, tarot, whatever you call this. That's a sula sotaza, you can't do it. To do, you tell your fortune, give me, a, give me your hand, I'll give you, I'll give you a slap, your hundred, I'll tell you the future. I mean, guys, <laughs> very easy way to make money, but that's not something the Jewish people do. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu warned us. It says, why? Because what the Torah says, ki, ki to avat Hashem. It's an ab abomination to God, whoever does those things. And because of those abominations, Hashem Elokecha, mori shutam ipanecha. The reason why the land of Israel was given to the Jews is not because the Jews, you know, are like, you know, good guys or whatever it is. It's because what those people did in the land. Now, if you do the same thing in the land of Israel, you're going to also get kicked out. It's very simple. There's no hocus pocus. That's a reality. <coughs> and if you're not in Israel, it doesn't mean you're allowed to do so. You're going to get kicked out. Kicked out. You're going to have problems upon yourself when you do this thing. Why? You need to be complete. Your emunah has to be complete with God. Whatever God does, that's it. You don't need shortcuts. So this, again, those, those common denominator between all these prohibitions that we have is man's effort to, broke, to break the boundaries of what is possible for him too. And he does so by trying to figure out, to know, to know by the... the, the you know, the, the, the shape of the clouds, you know, to do all these like cards, uh, science, to move those things, you know, you, you try to know. It's not really for you to know. There are certain things you don't need to know. And if you don't, if you don't understand that, it's very simple. Remember what your parents told you. You ask them certain questions. You said, well, you grew up, you'll know right now, I can't tell you. And then you find yourself, and you're very upset with your parents. And then one day you find yourself as a parent, and you find yourself saying the same thing to your children that your parents told you. <coughs> And then you understand that really there was not it was not time for me to do. Unfortunately, today the agenda is, when, especially when it comes to this, uh, you know, re-education and brainwashing of children in, in schools, is that they bring to them stuff that it's absolutely not appropriate for a child to learn. Leave the children to children. Don't make them into weirdos. Right, teacher? Without mentioning your name, right? Just absolutely. give me a high five. Absolutely. Yeah, that's right. That's right. When society goes woke, society goes broke. And we are a broken society. And I'm not sorry about that. I'm just, I'm standing behind that. Children don't know how to read. They don't know how to do basic math. But they know about sex change. Hello, what are you guys thinking? They don't know how to read. Instead of teaching them all this nonsense... <coughs> Teach them morals, how to be a nice person, how to be kind, how to help one another. Don't poison them for your political agendas. And that's, God doesn't like those things. Now, the Rambam says that all these things are like trickeries in terms of the, the it's called achizate naim, that it fools the people. He is, you know, so that's why you're not allowed to do so, because it's like deceiving people. However, even if you say, even if you would say, that let's say there is such powers, right? 
And the Torah says that there are powers, right? As you could say that there was a story of the woman of Ov, when she brought uh, Sh uh, Shmuel and Moshe, you know, for Shaul when, when he came and asked. Even if you say that regarding what the Gemara says, even though there are different opinions in the Gemara, it says it was all and Naim, some say it was the... I know, even together with that, there is, beyond this argument, there is a certain value, discussion about values or virtues, what does the person need to live by and to focus his efforts towards? In other words, when you are wasting your life on things that are not your concern, you are wasting the biggest gift in, in the world. That's your life. You're wasting your life. And that's terrible. You need to connect to life, not connect to death. Say, so, oh my goodness, there's so many things to do. I can do it. That's why, you know, we had it all. I mean, all, all the, all the, all the, whether it was Chachamim, whether it was the patriarchs, they never sit down under, under, under a palm tree with, uh, you know, a few Egyptians going like this, you know, and while they're sipping on pina colada and, uh, and having shots of tequila. They always have to worry about something, doing things, because there's a lot of work to do. There's no time for you to rest. There's a lot of life to live. Somebody once says that, that wisdom is being wasted on the young, and, and life is being wasted on the old. And that is absolutely true. Because many people reach a certain age and just counting the way the days to death. Because there's nothing in their life to live for. But you're done with the work. The world, the world is perfect. Work. Fix yourself. Fix the world. So that, that, that decision to, to uh, stay away from death... And to remove yourself is a tremendous, tremendous, uh, tremendous meaning behind it in terms of, 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 of a concept, of an idea. Even if you're talking from an existential point of view, if you look at Viktor Frankl, right? Men search for meaning, right? You would see that that, that, that kind of a philosophy, his existential philosophy, really showed us that the ability to hold on to life and to actually go through the hardship of life it really depends on your ability to look at death in the eye. To look at death in the eye, to recognize it, and then to turn your back and to choose life on every single aspect of your life. Choose life. Of course, it brings the whole abortion case back to a different light, but you know, maybe it would shed a different light. Somebody once said that there is a, I don't know how accurate it is, that on aborted kids, that all kids that were born, uh, or this, oh, I'm sorry, kids that survive abortion, there is a tendency now not to give them medical support, medical help. In other words, they went to abortion and they somehow stayed alive. And of course, I think there was, what is his name? Uh, Morgan Luttrell, Marcus Luttrell's brother had a whole speech about it in, I think, in Congress or whatever it was. And he says that as, an, as, a, as a fighter, many times they were in battle against enemy combatants that were shooting at them and then they got them and they were injured. And even though the two seconds ago they were wanting to kill them, he says, now nah, because who we are, we just give them medical support, just like medical care, just like one of our troops. So for enemy combatants, and if you leave them alone, you're going to put you on trial. So for enemy combatants, it's okay. For a child that survived an abortion, it's not okay. I just don't understand that. And it was an amazing thing. You know, if I'll find it, I'll put it on the, on the yeshiva chat. It is just amazing. And like how far is a society and how down have we gotten in the society? And, and a lot of it has to do with the celebration of death. We celebrate death and we need to stop with those festivals. We need to stop with those major meals that people throw on your side or whatever. It's a celebration of death. You want to celebrate life through the death of a person? Sit down and learn Torah because that's your biggest connection to life. That's why it says the Torah Kohanim therefore give us a different alternative. The Torah Kohanim give us the alternative is to hold on to life. Hold down to life by disconnecting yourself to death. To connect to Hashem. Why? Those who attach themselves to God, 
are considered to be living. When now, in other words, there is a meaning to your life. I'm connecting, I'm trying to get closer to God every single day in every single thing that I do. That's called life. Chaim kulchem ayom, you're all alive. And what is that devek? What is that glue? What is that attachment? What is it? Some kind of like 1095 steel that you put in a billet and you put in a forge? No, you have a better steel than that. We have better glue than that. That devek, that glue is Torah. So therefore, is the Torah, it's the mitzvot, it's the unity of the heart, that your heart, what do you mean unity of the heart? That my heart is going to be completely dedicated to Hashem. It's not going to be split. Well, like somebody told me, why, you're going to tell me to do all this thing? How am I supposed to enjoy life? I, so I wanted to tell the guy, I didn't want to tell him anything, but I wanted to tell the guy, what do you mean enjoy life? Who said that you are not enjoying life? Who said what you think you're enjoying is enjoying? The greatest enjoyment in this life that you know why you're getting up in the morning, that there is a meaning in everything you do. Not that you're flying, uh, taking a, you know, an F-16 flight and you think you're a big shot. That's not meaning. That's just a thrill. That's not life. That's not enjoying life. That there is a meaning to your life. That if, you, if somebody would look at you and say, ah, oh, that was life worth living. Then not you always up, upset and angry about everything. That's called Achdut Alev, that my heart is, is one, without any doubt, of what I need to do. Or maybe I'll go here, or maybe I'll go there. I told you this, what my Rebbe told me one time. Anything you'll do in life, you could regret it because you could have done something better. Anything you'll do in life, besides Salmut Torah. And believe me, I put this thing to a test time and time again, and yet I found something better that I could have done instead of learning Torah. Mm. Believe me. If there is something that I don't regret doing in my life, is learning Torah. Everything else, I think I could have done other things. I could have done better things. And believe me, I'm critical. So the, the Torah, the mitzvot, the unity of the heart, and... That's why, of course, uh, we have the Torah and we have Shabbat. That's why we have Torah and we have Shabbat. And that's why the Shem Ishmael refers, uh, attaches those things also to Shabbat as well. And he says, and according to that, we need to, uh, and I'm quoting what he's saying, Zachor v'shamor, Zachor v'shamor. Zachor v'shamor the Shabbat, remember and keep of Shabbat, Shem lu much ta'amirot. These are against those two statements that we said that are double statement, Emor ve Amarta. Excuse me. Shamor u Mitzvat lo ta'aseh. Ve'i ta'ara. That's to purify you. Not to prevent you from life. That's for, that's for imbeciles. That's for buffoons. Lo ta'aseh, oh God doesn't want me to enjoy. No, it's to purify you. On the contrary, it's something to purify you. And it's purify you from things that were attached to you during the six days of the week. All the filth, the schmutz that you go into. You need, to, you need to forge it. You need to hammer it so the sparks will come out. When you hit it with a spark, all the imperfection come out. If you, if, you, if you see the Japanese sword masters, they bang it and they bang it until there's no imperfection. In other words, every time they bang it, since they know what they're doing, they're arranging the, the atoms of the, of the, of the, of the steel in a, in a perfect order. So, those are mitzvot lotase. Zachor in mitzvat aseh ve'zo kedusha, and that's Zachor. Remember, that's that's the holiness, and that's why we have a Shabbat Shemov and Zachor, which exactly for the same reason as we have those two statements that a person only when only when a person gets to purify himself from whatever happened through the six days and understand that, then he zoche to the kedusha of Shabbat. It's just like a, a uh, potter that takes, that takes clay, which is just raw material. And then he takes it and he shapes it. And he creates that, that space. Right? He removes all the raw material. All the raw material around until it creates a fine wall of just clay around it. But the most important thing is, of course, the space inside in which you can actually put you know, tea, coffee, wine, whatever you want to put into the space. We, therefore, need to identify the Yetzer 
We need to identify this materialistic aspect inside of us that doesn't leave us alone. We need to identify it. We need to remove it. And we say, I, I don't play this game anymore. As they say in Yiddish, homie, don't play that. Mm -hmm. To remove this and then enter and don't leave a vacancy there. Immediately after, Zachor v'shamor, ma? Bedibur echad. When you remove the bed, immediately fill up with good. Don't leave void. Because then you have no control of what will come in. The, the Tahara and the Kedusha at one point. The Tahara and the Kedusha at one point. That's, what, that's the remez of what it says here. Amarta, emor ve'amarta. Immediately, one after the other. And this is all for us as well. Right now is what? Is, uh, we are at uh, Yudbet Sivan, which is Pesach... Uh, Yudalet, Yudalet. Yeah. Pesach Sheni, right? We are in Pesach Sheni. We write, I mean, yeah, we write right before Sivan. Sivan is we two weeks or whatever, a few weeks away from, uh, you know, from uh, from Shavuot, Matam Torah. This is this, those weeks are weeks in which we're supposed to remove all the imperfection from us in order to create the the space inside to receive the to receive the the Torah. Today is the yard site of Rabbi Meir Balanes, which is very important. So you know, like your little candle. Put your tzedakah, make a wish, right? B'schut, right? But don't make a wish to Rabbi Meir, to Hashem. Not b'schut, because you put the money in tzedakah. Eat your matzah. Today, tonight, you can eat matzah. Tomorrow also, until this, you can eat matzah. You fulfill mitzvah uh, Pesach Sheni. What do you say on matzah? I'm sorry? What do you say on matzah? We, Sfaradi, Sfaradi, say mezonot, Ashkenazim, and Motsi. Even on Pesach Sheni? Even on Pesach Shlishi. <laughs> <laughs> and I wish everybody to have a holy Shabbat Amen. but the holy Shabbat will be because you let the Kedushah come inside Amen. so HaKadosh Baruch will help us get the Yetzirah under control and will, will help us attach ourselves Lechaim and Nizkei Kuran Lechaim Tovim Arukim Lechalom Bracha V'Aslacha Osher V'Osher Shefa Bracha V'Aslacha V'Chen Yiratzon V'Nomar Amen, Amen.